Hi, uh, so welcome to the lesson on measures of relative standing. Um, another way of saying this is measures of position. So in this one, uh, we look at how one observation ranks relative to the others. Um, and two ways we do that, we look at z-scores and percentiles. And we've already seen both of those, really. Um, so measures of position um, are especially useful when you're comparing two values on different scales, like if you're looking at um, ACT scores versus SAT scores. <coughs> you know, how do you know which one is a higher score? Well, one thing you could do is look at your percentile, um, you know, because usually they report that. They'll say you're in the, you know, 98th percentile, which would mean you did better than 98% of everybody else. Um, but one way you can do that would be Z-scores. And we've seen z-scores before, twice. We've seen them with the uh, empirical rule, and we've also seen them with normal probabilities. Z-scores are just the number of standard deviations above or below the mean an observation lies. So if your z-score is 1, that means your standard, your one standard deviation above the mean, whereas a z-score of negative 1 means your one standard deviation below the mean. So negative values mean below the mean, positive values mean above the mean. This is the z-score um, formula, just like we've seen before, um, where you're converting using x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And I didn't put symbols in there because this formula is true for the population as well as the sample. So here's the example um, that we saw a minute ago. Um, so the mean SAT score is about 1,500 on a scale of uh, up to 2,400. And the standard deviation is about 300. So this student's score was 1,850. So we would take the 1,850 that he scored minus the mean of 1,500 divided by 300 which gives you 1.6667, so he scored one and two-thirds standard deviations above the mean. For the ACT score, those means the mean is about 21 and the standard deviation is about 4.7. So we take his score of 26 minus the mean of 21 divided by the standard deviation of 4.7, and we see that he scored 1.0638 standard deviations above the mean. So 1.6667 is a little bit higher than 1.0638, therefore the SAT score is better. Um, again, when we talk about percentiles, we're talking about the percent of observations that are below that number. So the 73rd percentile on the test would mean that you scored better than 73% of all people who took the test. Um, keep in mind that that doesn't mean you got 73% of the questions right on the test. Um, the score of 98 out of 100 could be the 73rd percentile. So let's talk about um, some specific percentiles. The 25th percentile is called the first quartile, which is shown as Q1. The 75th percentile is the third quartile, which is Q3. And we talk about the interquartile range as well, which is just Q3 minus Q1. Um, so by the way, the second quartile would be the 50th percentile, which is the median. So we use these quartiles um, to determine which values are outliers. Now this is a little bit different from what's in your book. Um, you can use standard deviations to determine outliers or you can use quartiles. Um, I like quartiles uh, because outliers don't affect the uh, percentiles in the data set, whereas they do affect the standard deviation. So to me, you don't want to use a measure that's affected by outliers to determine what is an outlier. So, um, so we're going to calculate these fences, which is just 
these formulas right here. So we've got the lower fence, which is Q1 minus one and a half times the interquartile range. It's always one and a half. That's just how it's defined. The upper fence is Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR. And then we determine what's an outlier by looking at any observation in the data set that's below the lower fence or above the upper fence. So if we look at this example, these are waiting times at a bank in order to be served. So the first person waited, had to wait 8.35 minutes. The second person waited 3.82, etc. So from StatCrunch, we're going to get uh, Q1 is 5.55, Q3 is 8.36, and then the interquartile range, we just do Q3 minus Q1, is 2.81. So when we do these values, um, we're just plugging in the lower fence formula, and we get the lower fence is 1.335, and then if we plug in the upper fence formula, we get 12.575. And so any data points that are below 1.335, so we're going to look through our data set and see, and yes, we do have one observation that is below that value, that's going to be an outlier then. And then we're going to look through and see, do we have anything that's above 12.575? So if we look through there, we don't. So we don't have any outliers on the high side, uh, but we do have one on the low side. Um, data, data sets don't have to have outliers. Sometimes they have none, sometimes they have one. Sometimes they have more than one. Um, in the data sets, we're going to see they're small data sets, so I wouldn't expect more than about two. So if you get a lot of outliers, you might start thinking that maybe you've done something wrong. So, um, by the way, what do we do with outliers in a data set? Some people want to just throw them out. Um, one rule of thumb is look at the outlier to see if it's the result of an error. Um, so for example, um, if you're asking uh, how much, how many minutes or how many, how many hours of TV somebody watches in a day and they say 30, you know that's got to be an error because it, you can't watch 30 hours of TV in a day. That person probably thought you were asking minutes. So if it's an error, throw it out, otherwise keep it. That's kind of the what I go by. So now let's look at box plots. Um, a box plot shows the median quartiles outliers and then the min and max within the fences. The one we're doing uh, in your book is called the modified box plot because it shows the outliers. Okay, so make sure you're uh, doing the modified box plot if you're looking at it in your uh, textbook. So um, I use StatCrunch to make this box plot here. Um, these are the waiting times. Um, you can see down here this dot means the outlier. And here, here are the features here. So this line here represents Q1. This line here is the median, and this line here is Q3, okay? So those lines always represent Q1, the median, and Q3. Now out here, we draw the, the, uh, the whiskers out as far as the smallest and lowest observations that are not dark that are not outliers. So you take out the outlier and then draw the whiskers as far as you have left. And then you put your outlier there as a dot. Okay? Um, so if you look at this box plot, um, you can see some information about the distribution. You can see where the middle 50% of the data is. Um, you can see the outlier, and then you can see where the rest of the data is. It is nice to look at side-by-side -side box plots. Um, 
so that you can compare uh, two distributions. All right, so that's it for this lesson.